Hello everyone and welcome to day 12 of 30 Days of Godzilla. Today we're going to be taking a look at the 12th entry in the Godzilla series, Godzilla vs. Gigan, also known as Earth's Destruction Directive, Godzilla vs. Gigan, and also Godzilla on Monster Island. Even though there's only like three scenes that take place on Monster Island, so it really doesn't make much sense to call it that. Now, this one I feel gets a pretty bad rap. Most people will consider this a rather boring entry, and I would have to disagree with that. I enjoy this one, but I can see where a lot of people hate it. The plot of this one revolves around a comic book artist named Gango, who is hired as a creative consultant for a world peace theme park featuring a giant Godzilla tower. It turns out that the park is actually run by a group of cockroach aliens from the space hunter Nebula M. Yes, you heard me right, the aliens are cockroaches from outer space, so the aliens want to implement their world peace plan by using some sort of action tapes that acts as a control beacon for the monsters Gigan and King Ghidorah. Now honestly sit back and tell me that that doesn't sound like the greatest plot for a movie ever made. Okay, the cockroach alien angle is kind of funny, but this movie does feature one of my favorite monsters in Gigan. A rather interesting looking monster who has claws for hands, he can shoot lasers out its head, and he has a buzzsaw weapon on the front. Needless to say, Gigan is a pretty badass kaiju. So the comic book artist discovers the tape and meets another group of people who are on the opposing side of the aliens. They decide to play the tape and while no human is able to understand it, Godzilla and Anguirus are able to understand it and I am not kidding you when I say this, both Godzilla and Anguirus start talking. It's honestly horrifying because A, Godzilla is talking and B, it sounds like he has smoked too many cigarettes and he has this really raspy, smoky, terrifying voice that's just unpleasant to listen to. So Godzilla sends Anguirus back to check out what is going on. Of course, Anguirus gets his ass kicked. Then he ends up reporting back to Godzilla, and both monsters head towards Japan. Also, the humans find out that they are, in fact, alien cockroaches, and the cockroaches end up capturing them, and then they tell them why they're here, and this once again turns into another one of those anti-pollution movies even though it's not as overdone as Godzilla vs. Hedorah was. So eventually the monsters Gigan and King Ghidorah show up after appearing from exploding diamonds. Now for those of you wondering why King Ghidorah is still alive, considering how he was killed and destroyed all monsters, well remember that movie took place in the future and this movie is the present day. I also wanted to bring something up really quick. Why is it that King Ghidorah is controlled by so many different alien races? Is he like a Ranta monster? To count it, he has been controlled in the Showa series not by one, not by two, but three different alien races. That's an awful lot for a monster in space. Jeez, he, he really does get around, doesn't he? After Gigan and King Ghidorah cause a lot of destruction, which features a good amount of stock footage from War of the Gargantuas, I might add, Godzilla and Anguirus show up in the monsters fight. Now, the monster battles in this movie are entertaining as hell. Now, that's one people that people who even hate this movie or really don't like it can't deny that the monster battles are entertaining as hell in this one. Even though uh, the cheapness does kind of play through with the Godzilla suit kind of falling apart and stuff. Godzilla takes the biggest beating of all time up to this point in the series with this one, and so does Anguirus. I mean it, this movie is very violent. There's a good amount of bleeding from the monsters in this one. And this movie was rated G at one point for general audiences. Well, at least when it was called Godzilla Monster Island. when they edited it with that title superimposed in that place, but still, the fact that this gets a G rating just amazes me. Even though that they have control over both monsters, it turns out that the cockroaches have a death beam in their tower that is very powerful that will seemingly take out Godzilla. The death beam absolutely trashes the hell out of Godzilla. As a kid, it was tough to watch because I was like, come on Godzilla, get back up, get through it, fuck over the aliens, and fucking destroy Gigan, and fucking kill King Ghidorah. And destroy shit because that's what you're supposed to do not get your ass kicked by a building with lasers with Godzilla seemingly defeated the humans plant a bomb in the tower which destroys the control room and stops the beam from working it then allows Godzilla to get his strength back and he and Anguirus are able to continue the battle against the monsters there's a lot of stock footage here which does hurt the quality of the battles but the new stuff here is still pretty cool I like where Anguirus keeps flying back into King Ghidorah with his spikes in. There's also another cool moment where Godzilla keeps picking King Ghidorah up and just slamming him up and down repeatedly on the ground. So, the new stuff's pretty cool. The old stuff, eh, it does hurt it. There was really no need for all that extra stock footage. After the two evil monsters experience an epic beatdown at the hands of Godzilla and Anguirus, both monsters flee back into outer space, and Godzilla and Anguirus are considered the victors, and the movie ends with one of my favorite moments in the Godzilla movie, where Godzilla does a cool slow motion turnaround roar, and we get this song that sends us off. So there you go. 
Godzilla vs. Gigan, and is it really one of the weaker movies in the Godzilla series? Well, for one thing, it does come off as pretty cheap considering that it is inconsistent with its stock footage. The idea of cockroaches as the villains was pretty stupid, but it's pretty funny. And yeah, it does take a bit long for the movie to get going, but I do like the main actor and I think the guy has kind of a funny charm to him. Everyone else, on the other hand, not so much. Would I say it's one of the weaker Godzilla films? In terms of quality and laziness, I would say yes, but in terms of being entertained, I would say no. I found this one to be more entertaining than some of the other Godzilla movies that I have talked about. Anyways, don't forget to come back tomorrow as we take a look at the last Godzilla movie that was seriously geared towards kids. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all later.